Welcome back to the AC Summer Season as we hot swap drop into Champ Select. Quick shot in Bedias, about to bring you Rogue taking on Schalke. And with XL just dropping a game to Misfits for Schalke, a team that's right around them. If they were to pick up a very surprising win, it would put pressure on XL. We make Schalke's step towards playoffs a little bit more possible, but it's a tough toss. It certainly is, as Rogue are looking to cement themselves as the number one in the regular season. This could very well be uh, a trend for Rogue now. They what? Summer last year first, yep. then last split they were second, yep. tied with G2 in score, but losing their head to heads. And then in this split, right now, they are tied for first with Fnatic, and they can take an early lead with a big win right now. Well, let's see if they can. Rogue will be on the blue side. We're playing on patch 11-14. Of course, we didn't see too much dramatic shakeups in the previous game. Straight out the gates, Ziggs as well as Gwen banned alongside the Kalista. So Diego still up and very popular Thresh. Another very impactful champion that we've seen many, many times. And this Ziggs ban, interesting, because we've seen Hunt Summer running that as well. It's interesting that Rogue would ban the Gwen themselves um, and the Ziggs, as you mentioned, because, well, Ziggs is something that they've already shown that they're willing to play. On top of that, Gwen is just really OP. <laughs> so why would you not want to force your opposition to ban it? It says to me that Rogue have a different priority in mind. The question is, what that is. Diego, perhaps, is something that they think is the most broken, perhaps? Still I don't know. Open, still available to them. Third ban was that Jin Zhao from Rogue. Schalke taking their time to figure out what they want to remove from the pool here. And for Rogue, of course, they've had such a fantastic string of games. will be the LeBlanc taken out. So Lucian still up and available as well. This was taken away. I mean, what do Rogue go for? Because there's a number of powerful picks still available to them. Diego is my... Oh, okay, well, <laughs> Diego is going to be my guess, um, and he's going to lock that one in. So now I'm thinking of responses. With Callista gone, Aphelios could be a high priority here. It's interesting because with the changes, things like Akali has clearly fallen out of favor, at least based on my one-game sample size. Correct, I can now and, and say one, one and a half games, one and a half games, right? Because we're halfway through this draft. Hey, Lilia, first pick. Okay, okay, so 11-14, the uh, oh, category was open. adjusted, and Lilia effectively lower base, uh, ramps with AP, and uh, we'll need to see, we'll be able to recoup the losses once AP is picked up. I think that was the wording that I saw. Neon's gonna lock in the Varus instead. So I'm sorry, it was, the Lucian is the big thing that was left up and available. So what they've done here is um, they're going to lose it. <laughs> so I was going to say, uh, when you lock in an AP jungler this early, to me, that immediately suggests that you're looking at an AD mid laner like the Lucian. Um, and while I don't think it is the strongest combo, I think that what you can do is that because Lucian typically gets so much prio in lane and Lilia is such a great counter jungler, um, it, they can work very well together. But that's not happening. Not what they're going to do. Not so, happening. Nuclear yeah. has got two games played on Lucian historically, both of which were wins. It's going to land over in Larson's Wow. Hat. Was that an <laughs> insta-lock? I really <laughs> What is going on? Oh, wow. On? Okay, I'm really kind of... Well, the the the, the Aphelios lock-in into the Aurelia. Wow. Okay, so let's start with Rogue's first half. So what do Rogue have? Well, they have... Strong side laners in the form of Lucian and Viego that I think can be beaten by an Aurelia in the 1v1 in a side lane. So perhaps that's not their strongest suit. Team fighting, however, still pretty strong, especially when you think of double AD carries. Very AD heavy right now, so they're going to need a big AP champion to round out their draft, that's for sure. Um, but I will say that Rogue, at the very least, are working towards options where they can get prio, something that they like to do. Shakra has made a great video uh, on Rogue about the early game and how they often approach it and how they like to have dominance in the early laning phase. But I don't think Viego gets it against Aurelia. Perhaps with the Aurelia changes, that is a little bit different. I haven't really seen much of the new Aurelia on this patch. Um, and same for what is paired with the Aphelios. Well, we'll find out because the Thresh is banned. The Nautilus is banned. Um, I'm interested to see if Time Cannon shows up or not. But you yeah. talked about one of the big AP threats. Oduwamne has lost access to that cannon. Another support that Trimby could run is oh, denied. Course. Alistair's still open and available. And of course, Inspired has run both Viego's 
that because rogue have run well, this, this is, summer. The, the cannon ban is so good from Shaka because it actually forces the Viego into going top. I completely forgot that it can go in the jungle. Uh, and then the AP option would have come out in the top lane. I just assumed Odo Omni was playing it. Mainly because Inspired plays a lot of AP junglers. Uh, Diana is still up and available. Uh, he's also played Fiddlesticks. This rogue banned Diana. <laughs> what is going on? Well, now they have to pick Fiddlesticks, right? It's... Why would you ban Diana if Lily is on the other side? They're Unless potentially they're... worried about it being in mid? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure on the Diana one. I'm just going to have to hold my hands up and say I do not know why they banned it. Um... Many, many questions to be answered. And of course, with the Braum, the Leona uh, gone. Sorry, the Nautilus gone, the Leona gone. Options for Braum and Alistair, one of the champions that I was looking at for the support pool. Yes, and Braum, I think, is a really good pick. Yeah? Yeah. Unless they think that Tom Kench is the new OP. Um, I haven't seen a huge amount of it in support as of yet. So I think the teams are still experimenting with how oh. good the champion actually is. But I think against what is... Okay, so Irelia, lots of great damage. Kind of wants to dive into your face. Braum and Aphelios is just a really good combo against Irelia specifically. Like, if I'm Irelia, I'm already miserable. <laughs> Aside from the fact that I'm now also playing his double AD carry, the, the Braum has really just made my life even more miserable. The Varus has really good range, but... Yeah, I think that... This Aurelia is not going to have a good time. I mean, it's it's not, but it is Broken Blades. Aurelia, he's played 16 games on the champion, 75% win ratio. Ooh. Of course, uh, jungle AP. This is what we were looking for. Is the Gragas option going to be locked in? A last okay. second swap. So for the third time, we will see Inspired running Fiddlesticks in the jungle. One win, one loss. And now what do you run into this composition to round out in the mid lane into Lucian as well? Well, I think you have decent disengage. I want damage. That's what I want. More damage. I don't know if melee damage is what I would. Uh, Jace, I like a little bit more. Um, yeah, I like Jace a lot more. I think that the poke pairs well with the virus. Um, I think the interlution, it's fine as well. You have the AD, AP, mid jungle splits. I just, I kind of just prefer Rogue's comp. I think that it just. Against what Shalk is trying to do, the Aurelia pick I'm really not a fan of. If you can get it ahead in top lane, great. But against Fiddle, Braum, Aphelios, I just think that the champion's not going to be able to have an impact. No matter how good Broken Blade is on it, I really struggle to see how it's going to 1v9. Uh, I think that the poke is very much what you want against the comp like Rogues, because I don't think they have the best of engage tools. Very similar to what uh, XL struggled with last game, where Fiddle is really your only engage. Yeah. Uh, and maybe an Aphelios ultimate. So I like that they pivoted towards the Jace, and now they can rely on the jace Forest combo. But, yeah, we'll see how well they utilize this uh, this this poke, and if the Alistair can act as strong enough disengage to prevent the Fiddle from actually finding the fights uh, and getting Rogue the, the team fights that they're looking And also, I'm going to I'm gonna quote Vedish from a little bit earlier. Definitively, Akali is dead, right? So it's two full <laughs> drafts gone through, right? That is sarcasm. I am playing with that, but a very interesting maybe unique draft especially with the order of the bands that came in that diana phase two very very intriguing to me but we will see inspired on that fiddle it's rogue taking on shaka Welcome to the Rift, it's on Summer and Trimby already flanking Larson, shadowing his lane for the time being, stepping forward. Defensive start here from Schalke. Rogue 8 and 3, the score is mirrored by Schalke 3 and 8. The bottom of the table, trying to figure out who's going to be that sixth team to make their way up. So, very quickly, let's talk about some of the champions and then we can talk about some of the play styles that we get from these teams. Um, we have talked about the Lilia. A bunch of changes came through. I mean, you said that they were like adjustments. They kind of look like buffs to me. <laughs> um, scaling, more scaling will always be, I think, intrinsically that way, right? Yeah, um, but I don't think that her early game was really made that much weaker. Um, I definitely think she gains a lot of value from levels, of course, so um, she will be a little bit weaker, but her base damage wasn't really hurt that much. Um, so yeah, I think that the buff that Lily has received makes sense as to why we're now seeing her a little bit. She can also offer great, um, 
early game presence because of how quickly she clears the jungle. Her ganks aren't always the strongest. When she gets level six, she offers a little bit more. But I think that one of the biggest things that she can offer is actually her ability to counter jungle. Uh, and against, the, I think against the Fiddlesticks, that's not always the easiest thing to do. It might seem that way, but Fiddlesticks is deceptively strong very early on into the game. Um, but her kiting power may make her stronger than she actually appears to be. They're gonna do a pretty standard early jungle path, not something that we always see from Lilias, as she starts from the bot side and paths up towards top. If there's one player that's gonna know the tips and tricks, it is going to be inspired. It is his most played champion. Yeah. It's 16 games. So Kyrie locking that in first rotation into inspired on the fiddle. We need to see how it plays out as they're starting to make their way down. And very good job here by the observers to highlight Hansama because he's been one of the players we've talked a lot about over the past few weeks. Yeah, he certainly is. But before we talk to about Inspired, I want to talk a little bit more about this Aurelia first, mainly because it is a champion that was insta-locked. And I think that in the terms of the composition, I understand why he picked it into Viego, probably because he thinks that it's a very good matchup into Viego. And I also understand why. At level two, Aurelia actually has a huge amount of lane prowess, but she too had some changes on this patch. She now only has four passive stacks instead of five. Uh, her E has now been made to a set standard, but once she has a passive proc, this is when she's at her scariest. And if I'm Odawamne right now, this is around the time where I would be the most respectful and the most scared. And you can also see with the jungler hovering around the top side that uh, the Aurelia is someone that has to be feared. Level three now comes through. I'm just waiting for that engage to come. Odawamne, good use of the shroud. <laughs> I'm on um, the edge of my seat Here it now. is. That's good dodge really out. Nice. Be able to okay. Connect. So well played there by Odoamne, showcasing the respect that you have to do. So many people I've seen fall to the, the trap of level 2, level 3 Aurelia. A fully uh, stacked passive against an Aurelia is just really terrifying to deal with. So um, I think that it will struggle as the game progresses. I think it's really important that they get the Aurelia ahead. And I want to see Schalke invest a lot of resources, play towards the Aurelia, and make sure that she is actually getting the resources that she needs to, to be very strong. Well, right now. Kyrie was making his way for the scuttle, was picked up there by Inspired. The wave is crashing into Odo, and it looked like Broken Blade was starting to TP. So Larson already backed, made his way into the mid lane. Got those refillables, got those biscuits, and pushing forward into the variants. Now, what's crazy about what Inspired did is he's obviously done a full early yeah. game jungle clear, but off the back of that, he's also going to get two plates as Neon is forced to use the cleanse as Trimby gets a good punish off against him as Limit is a little bit split. But while this all happens, how Rogue typically play is Inspired usually invests a lot of resources towards the bot side of the map. In recent weeks, that hasn't quite been the case. As you look in the early games, uh, weeks one to three, we saw a huge amount of jungle proximity. That's the amount of time jungle is spending is the bot lane um, for Han Summer. This is quite a lot. And right now it looks like, I don't think Kiri is going to get a successful gank off here, so I'm going to keep talking about this. Um, but what happened was in weeks four to five, the meta kind of shifted. We talked about that Ziggs while we were starting to see a little bit more about that from hands. And also, they were struggling in their two versus two, which means that Inspired actually changed his approach and Odawamne received a lot more of the jungle attention, which was very uncharacteristic for him. You can see that his kill participation in the early game shot up dramatically. He was involved in way more kills and assists in the early game. Uh, his gold difference actually went down. So <laughs> we thought that was really funny because when I reached out to him about it, I was like, what happened? Well, the meta kind of shifted um, and now my jungler keeps coming top and you might think that good, but what he said was, I got auto-filled to jungle pressure recipient I don't like it either, don't worry. This, by the way, is a direct <laughs> this quote. This is a quote from Onoamne. <laughs> and it's also, it just does highlight a little bit of the mentality, the approach, and obviously it's a bit of a joke, but also the strengths that Odo has had for such a long time. The weak side king was a phrase that you coined a little yep. while ago and continues to show through with impressive stats, but also when you do invest resources into him, he is somebody to be feared against the Aurelia for his first time on Viego this summer. Akira is going to once again at least show face, but no real opportunities just yet. But yeah, we thought it was really funny that his goal difference actually went down and the fact that he's getting so much more jungle attention and he's like, well, this is actually hurting my early game more so than helping it. Uh, I think it just goes to show how talented of an individual uh, Odoamne is and how well he does without the resources. But I think he's going to get some resources this game because I think Rogue want to shut down this Irelia from the get-go. Inspired is going to hit level six. He will be spotted out by awards, but at the very least, they are covering Odoamne so that he can push this wave underneath the tower. And it looks like that he is continuing to be the jungle pressure recipient in the earth. <laughs> no doubt about it, but not any jungle pressure. How about support? How about mid lane? This is a four on two. No teleport for Nuclear Imp. That'll be a decent stun. And there comes the core, core, core. First blood to Inspired. Kira's is going to try dash away to safety. You know, we'll secure the kill. Two easy kills for Rogue. 
And they're doing exactly what we wanted to see from them in the early game. Put the Aurelia behind. Leave Han Solo to just farm off on a side lane. Just make sure that he's getting whatever he needs to make sure that he's relevant later on to the game. But just shut down this Aurelia. It's already going to be difficult for her to play. Oh. Uh, but just make it even harder and prevent her from being involved in the early game whatsoever. It's nearly a 2,000 gold lead. And honestly, I thought it was a very well-executed dive. It certainly was. Uh, Larson with the great roam used his pressure in mid. Trimby had already roamed up well in advance to the wards the top side of the map. Uh, and then Odo Amne with the reset gets himself a nice kill. So very well played from the Rogue four-man as they get themselves a one point, well, 2k gold lead early on. Unbelievable. I mean, despite the fact that Broken Blade had the flawless duet, it was a flawless double for Rogue. Look at that gold lead already. After what was very, very well played. And honestly, that was kind of the scary thing we talked about. Oh, you talked a lot about, Vedius. It's how you know, really in the laning phase is somebody to be feared and challenged, inspired. Already got those boots upgraded. Predator available to him and Curate moves to fish a little bit. Good ward there. I like that. Yeah, because it's just outside of the range of the control, but it will also give you information in the event that a Blast Cahoon comes over. So while Shaka will gain vision control over the bot side, Rogue can still respect it. Larson <laughs> gonna emote as he disengages from that little fight there in the mid lane. Well, there's being a little bit of an advantage here to Nuclear Int in terms of the HP pool, but well, Shalka got to be very, very cautious. I'm going to keep looking at my minimap for Inspired as Trimby's going to step forward. Flash, plane still available for Neon. Yeah, piercing her and looking to use Moonlight. Vigil comes down instead, 100 HP. One last shot, not enough. The Chakram flash away from the Winter's Bite. And it will be Limit taking down Trimby. Now Hansama making his way out. Nuclear Int, does he put the hammer down? Not this time around. And it was a bit of a comedic death there by Trimby. Uh, yeah, I understand why he flashed, and he did end up trading his flash and his life for the remaining summoner spells of Neon. Uh, Han Summer got a little unlucky there. I liked how he was very patient with his ultimate. Limit now looking for a flank behind, though. There's some damage coming out. The minions are going to help block this. The accelerated shock blast caught out, and um, all of a sudden, hang on. Limit's the one that gets stunned up by the two cast of blows. Red, white, defensive flash from Han Summer, 200 oh. HP. Hammer backwards! Han Summer survives! Not going to be enough from Nuclear Ant, and now Limit continues to run for his life. Is he not dead? I feel like he's dead. Yeah, to the rest of the minions. Most of the members of Rogue make their way up. Han Summer is donated <laughs> the kill. So now Shalka, they reply with that overdive of their own. I can already hear Dracos shrieking with excitement. For those that don't know, he loves this champion, and he loves talking about gun weapon management. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that right now, because notice how Han Summer is going to land the Q first, and then he's going to hold it, because he knows that Neon wants to, he wants to use the cleanse the moment that that comes through, but Han Summer wants to make sure that he can get the passive applied from the long range gun to do as much damage as possible. Um, at this point, though, he uses all the ammo from the greed gun. You're going to notice he's going to fire out the Q, and now he's going to get an opportunity to change weapons. He just needs to make sure that he cleanses out of the way here from the sun and the ignite, and then look, change of weapons, oh, no, and now no. he's got the red plus white gun. This was changed ever so slightly so that it wasn't strong as it used to be, but the thing is about it, Braum plus that combo, insta-passive proc. Like, you saw how quickly Nuclear Ink got stunned. Uh, it meant that Han Sama was able to play around that. So really good gun management there from Han Sama. A lot of people are just going to say 200 years, but no, that was this good. champion does require good uh, mechanic and awareness, and I think that he did a good job. There. Kudos on spotting that one. I was so focused on when Limit was going to engage and whether or not Nuclear Ink could make his way in. The intentional use of ammo on that Q into the bush, not only for some information, but like you said, setting up that counter. The gold lead's climbed uh, nearly 3,000 <laughs> at yeah, 10 man. minutes into the game. And uh, it's looking a little scary. Inspired. Oh, no. Crow Storm is available. Can hop over the wall. Nuclear and there's no flash, remember. Get terrified, get dunked. Trimby gets the support as well, secures some turret plates. That's oh. the fifth kill. Now Odo in some trouble from Vanguard's Edge, uses the Heartbreaker to safety, recognizing the risk. But the Rift Herald has already been picked up. And um, this is a pretty oh. strong oh. opening oh. here, Mr. Day. It just feels so rough it for really Nuclear does. Ant. Like, this is just how you punish a flashless mid laner. Inspired said, hey, this guy has no summoner spells. He thinks that he's safe in mid lane, but he's not. And props to Trimby. This man is just roaming all over the map. He has had quite the career arc. First split, last split, replacing Vanda that many were surprised to, to now growing alongside Han Sama, being very dominant in the two versus two early on this split, and now shifting with the stars, and now looking for a pick onto Limit. Well, there's going to chain of corruption, fired out. Han Sama putting damage onto Limit as the Unbreakable is keeping himself alive for now. Inspired chunk down, he's forced to run for his life. Now Trimby's the next target, dashes forward, then knocked back once again, and Trimby will 
gifted over to Schalke for the cost of a couple teleports. Okay, so Nuclear Int and Broken Blade both invested their teleports to help their bot lane out and get themselves a couple kills back on the board. But that means more farm was lost in the mid lane for Nuclear Int. You can see a big wave was lost. The TP <laughs> flank now coming in from Larson. <laughs> He's got himself the Gale Force picked up already. Broken Blade's not going to be able to find the Flawless Durator. And Larson literally just ducks and dives through everything Schalke throw it in. And again, great use of the guns there from Hansama. He applied the Q, which then also applies the Gravitum to then lock Broken Blade in place. Uh, and then Larson, it was just it was just child's play. It was so easy for him to do. Oh. And look, Trimmy now on the roam once again. Running for his life, Nuclear Int is going to get chucked down by the Culling Limit. Has Hex Flash available to him. Trimby's not going to find the Winter's Bite. The re-engage from Nuclear Int and the Headbutt actually saves Larson's life. I wasn't sure if that was the hammer on the Headbutt. But Nuclear Int escapes for now. And it's just looking like child's play, that gold lead, extending even further. But I will draw us back to a brief story we talked about. odawamne has been left alone for a long periods of time. Well... <laughs> He'll be relatively happy for the time being. <laughs> I mean, that is true. But he did also get the gank that literally has put them in this position in the first place. <laughs> so uh, I will still say he is sitting in a very comfortable spot right now. The bot lane has been swapped from Schalke. I mean, Divine Sandra's picked up already. Gale Force picked up already. Inspired Crow Storm is available. Kirei and Broken Blade instantly start to peace out. Do not be anywhere near the potential engage. Hunt Summit is a higher level than Nuclear. Okay, he just got level 9. But Hunt wow. Summit is a higher level. I wonder if we can get the little like, speed thing that we often get on the left production, if we could look at that, because... Um, Han Sama often, this isn't actually that rare. Han Sama would often get left alone to single farm things like turret plates and experience. Um, but I don't think we've ever really seen Trimmy, at least last split, have the same map impact yeah. that he is having this split. Uh, a huge increase in his impacts and growth over this year. And again, like it just comes back to it, European rookies, man. We have so much talent in our league. We are looking at the gold on our left right now, and you can see that four of the five top man. are currently in the rogue camp. Yeah, absolutely. The second tower is going to fall here in favor of rogue. They're going to extend that even further. And this composition, not only did you like what you were seeing from draft, now I think it's fair to say we like how Rogue are executing in-game, punishing and forcing errors as well. You know, everything that Schalke have tried to do, Felt like Rogue has had an answer, but also Rogue have forced Schalke, much like this dive that's coming up. Glacial Fisher comes out. It was a little opportunistic, maybe, is now Larson and Trimby back away. Uh, Trimby did miss his cue. If he landed it, I think there was room for a play there. But Omni now on the hunt against Neon. We'll find him. The level advantage, as well as that Divine Sundra into really nothing. Operator comes out, Neon flashes oh, no. to safety, but here comes Kirei. Manages to put Odo to sleep, and Kirei gets the kill. Well, Odo Amne, see what happens when your jungle is not there. <laughs> you need the help. You need the babysitting. You need the help, man. You need the help. Work on your lane in Odo Omni. That's just a joke, guys. Just a joke. Got to clarify. Um, Odo Omni got a little greedy there. He flashed for a kill that he couldn't get, um, and he did it anyway. <laughs> Ends up getting punished as a result. But I think that Rogue is still sitting in a comfortable position. They have 6,000 gold advantage. They have the first Drake. Uh, they use the first Herald to secure the first tower. They also have two towers in their back pocket. And I feel like that already it's kind of at a point where you're just... You're waiting to see how quickly Rogue <laughs> can close out the game, if I'm being really honest. I think so too. I also think um, today's game, obviously against Schalke tomorrow, against Astralis, and the next week you look at Fnatic and Mad Lions. For Rogue, when you look at the rest of Summer, we started this draft by talking about how Rogue want to confirm, solidify, cement themselves as the number one team in the regular season. Looking ahead to obviously the next four games, it's going to be a very good way to secure that, get as many championship points as possible so you can increase your chances for seeding going into playoffs. I'm really excited about that uh, Rogue Fnatic matchup next week in particular because listening to Upset on the podcast talk about how of the three teams to make it to Worlds, he didn't put Rogue in there. And he talked about how he felt that uh, they had Rogue's number and that in the bot lane, this was not a duo that he was particularly scared about. And admit, he was very respectful. And again, I would encourage people to watch the episode because it was a really good and funny one. Uh, but yeah, that, that I think I think Hans Summer's going to take that personally. <laughs> sure. And I think that he's the type of player that, for me, he's been one of the MVP candidates of this split. I think that his impact in the first half was really felt. Obviously, the team heavily played through him. And so he's going to be made to look a little bit stronger. And he does play very lane dominant champions. Um, 
Let's see how things progress as Odo Omni now gets collapsed. It does indeed. This will be yet another death for Odo. The rest of the team making their way through the mid lane. I mean, it's such a gigantic advantage that even the two picks that Schalke have been able to secure, they are still so far behind. It is Mythics for everyone except Trim Beyond Rogue. And only two for the time being on Schalke. And now there is a setup here. Gravitim is available. Moonlight Vigil can lock down Neon and Limit if wanted. Larson's going to be able to pick up the kill. There will be some reply back here from Schalke as Broken Blade's going to look for something. But the oh. Chrono Storm prevents the engage. Now the chase forward is inspired. Manages to leap over the wall. Get himself yet another. That's the eighth kill in favor of Rogue. And they are everywhere. Uh, observers, if we get a replay, could you please show us what inspired Saw? Because I don't think he actually had vision on Broken Blades when he made that ult, but there must have been some way in which he read the play and could see what Broken Blade was up to. But I'm really curious as to how he did that, because that was such a good ult from Inspired to catch Broken Blade out of position and Rogue get themselves even more kills. They pull their gold lead even further. Deathless for Inspired, as well as Lost in Hans Summer. So this is where things start off. We're having a look at Rogue's vision initially, uh, and we're going to have a look back. So the ping comes through right now. Now, I don't think he sees Broken Blade, but where's he going to spot him out? Oh, so he does have... We're on Rogue Vision there. So he's just watching him yeah, walk past. He is just watching him walk yeah. past there. Yeah. Oh, of course, that ward is just sitting in that brush right there. So he did watch him walk past. Uh, I thought it was super big brain from Inspire, but in fact, it was actually just very obvious. Uh, so he was able to get himself an easy pick. And uh, they walk away with more kills. Now, they're looking for another fight in the top <laughs> they lane. They are indeed. Limits level 8 versus 11, 12, 11. Before you even add in all the items, the second Rift Herald is summoned. It's pushed onto the inner turret. This is the fourth of the game. While that's going on, Broken Blade is trying to push the bottom lane. Rogue will pick themselves up another tower in the middle lane. Vettis, you asked a question earlier, how quick will Rogue finish? Well, they're trying to set a record. 18 minutes, they're already knocking on the inhibitor turrets. Yep, 8k is the gold lead. Rogue is absolutely dominating their opposition in this match. An impressive way to do it. I love watching Inspired's Fiddlesticks. Very clean game from him so far, but in all the right places at the right time. He has more farm than Odo Omne does. Very, very, very. very. Tell okay, me. tell me, do you know what the quickest win time in summer is? Is it 22 minutes, 39 seconds? Oh, so close. 22 minutes, 56 seconds. I was 17 off. seconds off. So 2250, let's call it 2250. That's, that's the benchmark here. I, I know I'm a there. little, I'm a little optimistic because Rogue, not always uh, the team that will pull, the, I'm going to call it the Misfits, you know, the push into the base that's a bit over eager, maybe not well timed. Um, but when you see how many tower dives that Inspired has had with that Crow Storm, I feel like this will be the time that we're going to push forward. And right now, Schalke, Are you going to make a Medic Crow Storm call? I don't think I can. Crow I don't storm. think I can. <sighs> when, when something like that happens that's so pure and magical, I know I won't live up to the expectations, right? Okay. I did a free But you could call, do your call, own call. version. That's what I'm saying, Trev. This is your opportunity. You could go like, go, 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 go. You know, your own metal version of it, maybe. Okay, I'll try a metal version of it. If we can see it <laughs> oh, wow, you just bought in. All right, yeah, I why respect not, that. Listen, this, this is a yes and space, all right? I'm going to back you up. But I mean, Schalke, they tried to play the map game. They got themselves a couple towers. But ultimately, it's just more uh, space for Rogue to work with. 20 seconds to Baron. They've got a bunch of wards set up, pinging inside the base of Schalke. Do you fancy they just make a play straight for Baron? I think they could consider it. The problem is if they do just flip a Baron, they also could just lose. Um, so they do require some setup. So I would be, um, I should say that I expect them to do the proper steps, you know, get mid, push out sides, clear out vision. They don't have much control in their half of the jungle right now, so the risk of a TP flank is real. Um, but as we're seeing right now, pushing through mid, move into river, then use our control of the river to set up some initial vision around the drake, look for a pick, get a pick, ideally the enemy jungler, and then you convert that into the Baron, which they can start oh. right now if they want to. Yep, that is my brain. Han Sama getting a kill. On to Kira. Damn it! Inspired denied me the core, core, core metal version. At 2256, Vedi. 2256. That okay. is the chase. Now, do they push straight in? What are the waves looking like? Down in the bottom lane, Broken Blade is pushing. There is a wave that's trying to be caught by Larson. And we have a 20 minute 45 second Baron already. Broken Blade has teleport available to him. And now Rogue are back away. Okay, the dream I think is dead. I don't think we'll be able to pick this one up. Is to shop and catch this bottom lane instead. Yep. Schalke, they are doing pretty well on the side lanes. They do have three towers themselves. Unfortunately, they're still, you know, nine and a half thousand gold down. 
No, just a minor inconvenience. The way the way that, that sentence started and ended, your tone of voice <laughs> didn't quite match it. <laughs> so I have a look at this. Again, green gun. Oh, it was the ult. Okay, so the ult went through. And then it's not the green gun that you have to be careful of. It's the white shurikens. <laughs> the chakrams chunking down. Shalka. While that was going on, by the way, a huge amount of damage onto Neon. He was forced to flash. Uh, Larson was chasing for the kill, wasn't able to pick it up. Two minutes to Dragon. We're a minute and 20 away from the record. And I mean, let's spare a thought here for Shalka. Three and eight um, in the standings right now. They just saw Exile losing near them. There's only one win above. But for Shalka, it has been a struggling summer. Yep. And unfortunately, coming up against the number one team in Europe right now, you can see why the, the difference is the way it is. Yeah, it certainly is. Bit of a shame. Schalke, the losing Abadage, um, changing out Kire. I think that the team hasn't quite been able to find form. I think that they have shown some good things, but right now, their base is being sieged on and people are dying. Cool, 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 cool! Not mental at all! Lawson with the help of Inspired. Pick up one, two, three kills. Whoa, 2256. 2256, we might be on the cards here. 2256. Luke Clear is going to force Flash to safety. Odawan is trying to chase him down. Gets caught inside the Vanguard's edge. Not dead just yet. Inhibitor number two will be focused. One and two. Correction, 2230. The Nexus 25 time. seconds. going to be the next one to focus. Broken Blade flashes for his life. Larson takes him down. Trippy misses another Winter's Bite as the Hammer comes out from Nuclear End. Rogue are pushing for the kill, and they won't get the fastest win. Oh. Nexus Tower is now being focused. There's no way they do this They're in 10 time. seconds. 10 seconds out. They turn their attention to the second Nexus Tower. Limit will prevent the record for now. Five seconds. seconds. Four seconds. Rogue destroy Shelka, but they do not destroy the win time. 23 minutes has crossed and Rogue obliterate Schalke. That was the funniest car 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 I have ever heard. <laughs> I made an executive decision that I, I wasn't going to have a powerful voice. <laughs> so I went comedic. <laughs> no, we were building up. I loved it. I loved it, Quick Shot. That was great. I, that truly made my wish, day. I truly wish I had a deeper <laughs> voice, but you got to lead it to the strength. You know? <laughs> oh, well, anyway. Very one-sided game from Rogue from start to finish. I like the draft. Uh, I like the way in which they played it out. And just a very clean game from the squad. Well executed and uh, huge props to Inspired. I think that his early game impact was massive. Him alongside Trimby were very, very strong. Uh, and uh, yeah, Oduwamne shouldn't be anywhere near player of the game. No, no. absolutely not. I have to call Oduwamne out. I mean, he gets given jungle attention. He gets given the first dive. And what does he do? Just go and like int in the, in the side lane? Shame on you. I expected more. Shame Odo. on you. Uh, for everyone else voting at home, key player of the game at LEC on Twitter. Inspired, Larson, and Trimby. I mean, ultimately, this is just Rogue purely outclassing both an individual as well as a team level. And uh, for Schalke now, obviously, luckily for them, there are several teams around them at the bottom of the standings. But the odds of postseason looking less and less likely. It's a scary situation to be in. And it's also Sad. Lost song, lost dance for the Schalke organization. Yeah. Uh, I imagine that many of the players, though, still have yes. strong careers in the future, uh, especially with the talent on that roster. But yes, Schalke right now in a difficult position. Rogue, though, currently sit at the top of the standings. And later on, we'll see if Fnatic can catch up to them at the top. We'll do a toss. After the break, Law will check in with Trimby on Rogue's win. After that, Mad Lions are closing in on a playoff spot. And we'll see if they can put another win on the board versus last place, SK Gaming. Yeah. You could have tried harder. Yeah. Now the base is being sieged on and people are dying. Cool, 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 cool! Not mental at all! Lost it with the help of Inspired! Planet and us are connected. We share its veins. We can continue to clog them or do something about it. By using millions of recycled plastic bottles in our new generation of durable washer and washer dryer tubs, we reduce plastic waste from leaking into nature's veins. Discover Beko's Eco Tub Washers and Washer Dryers for healthy living on a healthy planet.
Welcome back to the LEC studio after Rogue destroyed Schalke Nulfir in less than 24 minutes. Not the fastest win this summer, but still a very convincing win. Trimby, thank you very much for joining me. I often ask players what can they learn through difficult games or maybe losses, but what do you learn actually after a game like this? Um, well, I, uh, it was kind of a storm, so <laughs> it's not like there is a, a lot to learn from that. Or, but, uh, for example, like from my point of view, uh, I had some misplays, like individually, I would say, and mechanically. So I can for sure think about it and like try to uh, see like what was through my mind and why I did it this way and not the other way, and just try to like rethink it again and see if like my way of thinking was good and how to how to play out stuff dif uh, play out uh, stuff differently if i felt like it was not the best and this stuff but yeah the game was a bit quick so not sure if there's gonna be that much to review all right Hope so at least <laughs> all right well quicker review then and i don't know why <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect less from the perfectionist i know you are trimby but i'll come back to that a bit later in the interview because rug is doing so well right now you are first in the standings we'll see how fnatic plays later but i mean it feels like everything's going so well for you we saw that you try to experiment in your playstyle, playing more for the top lane than for the bot lane, uh, getting some new picks, trying some new strategies. Do you feel stronger than when you were in spring? Uh, for sure. I would say even though that we're not playing right now like the best version of us, I would say, we're trying a lot of stuff, as you said, and I think that we're trying to find out if we are good at it or not. And for now, for now, it's looking it's looking quite nice. We're trying to like look for opportunities. Like I try to be more creative and more active uh, on the map. So it's not only about the fact that we are just playing around uh, around laning phases only like uh, like an isolated way when we play only two v two, for example, on bot lane. So it's really nice to try this one uh, this out and see that we're actually having some success with it. Yeah, and, and I mean, the whole team is having success. You're very successful as well. Again, eight unique picks so far from you in summer. Similar to what you had in spring, it feels like it's your specialty. I, I don't know, I like the fact that you play so many unique champs, but how do you feel right now, Trimby, when you think about spring, your evolution as a player? You were mentioning that you had a lot of stuff to work on. So yeah, tell me a bit more about this and how you feel right now in summer. Well, pretty sure uh, in every interview I would say that I have a lot, a lot to work on, and I'm never, I'm never gonna say uh, it's never gonna be something that I think it's not true. But I think it's looking good right now. I feel for sure much more conf confident than I used to, and I think that we are, we as a team are looking better, and better. Even after the last week against G2, when we looked, yeah, we looked how we looked. I still think that it, it was not us at all, and we can for sure show much better than that so we'll just try we'll just try to improve on that and like individually i think that uh i'm looking i'm looking okay i would say like i'm for sure looking better than in the spring split in terms of the regular split because uh, last split i was really shaky i was doing a lot of weird stuff i would say and now it's more about i'm more confident about what i do and even if i fail in it i don't feel too bad about it and i just try to keep going so that's for sure something nice that i added to the summer split and it helps me out a lot well, this confidence looks good on you, Trimby. And you'll get G2 at some point. I know you still have some unfinished business with them, but we'll see that in playoffs maybe. But for now, thank you for the interview and good luck tomorrow against Australis. Thank you very much for having me. And we're going to take one break and we'll be back in a couple of minutes with SK Gaming and Mad Lions getting ready on stage right now. Stay tuned, guys.